Have you ever found yourself wondering what you would do if your blood sugars ever drop so low that you might not even be able to help yourself with low blood sugar treatments? It's a thought that I've had many times as somebody living with type 1 diabetes. And today, I want to walk through how to use and why you would use Bexemi. So this is actually a product, as you can tell, it is tattered, it is beat up. Uh, it's because this is expired and I'm actually going to open it today, show you how I would use it and uh, walk through a few of the pros and cons, the do's and don'ts so you have an idea of what you're getting into as well as what it even is. Uh, and if you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I am a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist. I also live with type 1 diabetes. Uh, I've got expired stuff all over the place that uh, if you haven't yet, you should probably check your own expiration dates on your diabetes products because I checked these and realized it would no longer work. And uh, the reason I wanted to use this today is because inside of this box, I have never seen the context contents. And I want to make sure that those of you who may also have similar questions, like what would I do if I had an extreme urgent low blood sugar, we have an idea of what's inside and how to use it. So it's not our first time experiencing that in the scary presence of a low. So uh, without any further ado, can I kind of jump in to some brief information about this product? Uh, like it's the only and first, of course, nasal glucagon option. And uh, you've probably seen uh, or heard of the injectable glucagon. It's this red tube. I'll put a, an image of it right here. This is the one that I was given when I was first diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And since then, uh, I believe Lily has actually discontinued it. Uh, and now they have better options like this, which is also made by Lily. Now, on this, uh, this company's website, they have a full instructions list of how to use it properly but i think most of us like to see it being used and not just being told or, or read about it so uh, you know this was first released back in 2019 at that point i've already had diabetes for 10 years and i was diagnosed in 2009 and uh, thankfully never had to use glucagon but wanted to kind of cover our basis as far as what is it why would you use glucagon why is it important uh, now most often glucagon is used for those who cannot help themselves it's told to our loved ones to our caretakers caregivers uh, this is to help us raise our blood sugars in an emergency situation where we might not be able to help ourselves right so glucagon itself and this is a common misconception is not sugar it's actually going to help release glucose from your liver and so a lot of people think when they inject it or they take this nasal spray and and inhale it that it's just sugar going straight into the bloodstream and that's what's raising the blood sugars when in reality it's actually telling your liver to release the glycogen in your liver which is stored glucose and that glucose is going to enter your bloodstream and that is what elevates your blood sugars so uh ultimately we're going to cover when you would take it why you would take it some pros and cons and uh, we'll jump into our video right off the bat so why would you use glucagon ultimately it is to save you from a rapid dropping blood glucose that's already in an urgent low so the, one of the reasons why i have not personally used it is thankfully i haven't been in too many dangerous low blood sugar situations that being said i did say not too many i have had a few and unfortunately uh, i was not ready for them <laughs> and it did get kind of scary a few of them i ended up in the hospital but thankfully as well i made it out I'm still here and as are you. So this is a great tool to have in your bag just as a backup, especially if your friends or family know how to use it. That is where it is most beneficial. So if you have this, but nobody knows how to use it, it's essentially useless, right? The chances of them stumbling across something in your bag and then reading the instructions in a moment of panic is very low. So it's important to show them how to use it, why to use it, when to use it before that opportunity arises. My wife, for example, has used uh, the red tube I showed earlier, we actually took an expired one and practiced uh, mixing it, injecting it into an orange, uh, you know, just like they teach you in the hospital <laughs> when you're first diagnosed. Uh, and that way she's familiar with it. And uh, I'm going to have her actually watch this video, as you should share with your loved ones as well, to so she knows what to expect with a nasal spray that's completely different, right? It's, there's, there is no injection. There is no mixing of ingredients like the previous versions. It's ready to go. So what's important to realize as well is that uh, the use of this is to pull you out of a low blood sugar but it is not the end all be all in fact in most cases recommendations surrounding glucagon or all cases i believe is that once it's delivered you should still call 911 even if you feel fine 
because the chance of a recurring low or, you know, maybe some uh, unfortunate side effects, you want to be ready for those. Uh, you know, even something like vomiting could be an indicator that you got to go back to the hospital. So I want to give you guys kind of a, I don't know, a warning to, to be ready for that. But understanding that this is a powerful tool to have is the first step. Second step, of course, is how to use it. Before we get into how to use it, though, I want to give you one other warning I almost forgot about, and that is the use of glucagon and drinking. So real quick, I want to just to give you this uh, overview of the topic. Drinking impacts your liver. Glucagon utilizes your liver's glucose that's stored to raise blood sugars. If you've been drinking, especially drinking heavily, and you try to use glucagon, it's basically useless. So remember that this is an excellent tool to get you out of a bad situation with a low blood sugar. But if you've been drinking, it doesn't do much or anything if you've been drinking heavily. So uh, a lot of people don't know that. I want to make sure that you have that little golden nugget to be more prepared. Uh, in that case, a juice box may be more beneficial than actual glucagon because the liver is busy with the alcohol. All right, so let's jump into some actual use. Uh, I will say as well that this is called Baxemi. When I first got it for the first year, I called it Basqueamy. It's not Basqueamy, and it's laughable that <laughs> I didn't take the time to actually read it. Baxemi. But we're going to go ahead and open this, this uh, extremely tattered container. Oh, it just, okay. Yeah, it's just falling apart. So inside here, you've got this little device little bottle. Oh, it's cute, right? Uh, now, what's important and noted on the, is that my, no, okay, I'm making sure my info wasn't on there for you guys, my medical information. Um, we've got this red tab right here. Now, I'm on their website as well. Website says do not remove the shrink wrap that's on here because this is actually a dry nasal powder. With it being a powder, if you open this and moisture gets into it, it could lose its effectiveness. We don't want that. So, until you are ready to use it, leave it as is. This is as far as you'll get, which is also why I wanted to make this video for you. Now, the first step they say on the website is to remove the red tape, I believe. Okay, and this is exactly why I just spent a minute reading through instructions. You're not going to have a minute in this emergency situation, right? So I did find the instructions. We're going to go ahead and put them on screen as well. So the first step is to remove this red tape. Uh, I'm going to put that, let's see, right there <laughs> and so we've got the red tape i'm gonna go ahead and peel it off oh my, okay it comes off like if this was an emergency i'd be up a creek so we're gonna pull that off next is gonna open the lid and remove the device and it says do not press the plunger until you're ready to give the dose so there we go open it up there is i'll go ahead and put it here for you guys there is our device oh this looks like that's where it's going in the nose so we have the entire oh. device here making sure there's no medical information on it it expired a year ago uh, i'm gonna go ahead oh we lost the focus I, I actually pulled up this other one expired two and a half years ago so check your supplies make sure they are not expired now uh, on these instructional pages you probably saw the other one pop up there for a second giving the actual dose so i have this in my hands again we don't want to open it until we're ready to use it because it can get moisture in there and then it's just not going to work but the first step is to hold the device like this and do it without squirting <laughs> the powder everywhere i'm gonna hold it here thumb and two fingers right and it does have instructions on here as well which is really nice you wouldn't know this before you opened it but it does say insert and push the plunger all the way in let's see if we can focus on it there you go insert into the nose push the plunger all the way in until this green line disappears right so first hold it here don't push it in yet I'm gonna, this is, this is sketchy, right? It's going in the nose just like that. I gotta be real careful not to push it because my blood sugars are perfect right now. I'm at 120, do not want to see them go to 500. But gently into one until fingers touch the outside of the nose. Okay, so it's like halfway up your nostril, that's interesting. Next, you're gonna push the plunger, which I'm not gonna do in my nose, okay? <laughs> gonna keep my blood sugars right where they're at because they're good, but I will actually push this and show you. I pulled out some, tissue from the bathroom because i'm curious about what this powder looks like and i'm really hoping it doesn't go everywhere so dose is complete when the green line disappears in other words when the screen line is up inside this housing okay so here we go I'm gonna go ahead and pull this here see if it makes a sound whoa there is all right so that got everywhere all right, so that is all over my laptop. I wish I had a different color 
because you can see it. See that powder in there? There you go. All right, so that was <laughs> kind of a disaster. It's everywhere. There is a good chunk of powder. Uh, now I know what it looks like. Um, I'm praying that none of that got in my nose or in my, I don't know where else it would absorb well, but it's expired. So I'm also going to count that as a uh, less risky, but it is everywhere. So beware of that. It'll be in your nose and I'll tell you why it's important towards the end. Now at this point, had I just delivered the dose, I would call 911. Uh, I wouldn't clean my computer off first because blood sugars are more important than my laptop, right? However, first step, call 911. You want to be aware of other symptoms that might arise. You're going to toss the, the device in the trash. Um, for me personally, it says throw it away. I might hold on to it and give it to an EMT or a nurse or a doctor on my way to the hospital, right? Because they're probably going to know what you delivered. Uh, however, most of them, if you tell them Vaccimi, they'll be able to Google it <laughs> and figure out what it was that they gave you. Now, if you're somebody helping someone with type 1 diabetes that is uh, in need of this being delivered and it has been delivered, the good news is that because it is a powder, it can't be delivered, can be delivered while they're unconscious. Uh, there's no risk of choking and it does absorb into the bloodstream. That's the goal of it. Uh, but if they are still unconscious, you want to turn them over on their side. Big reason for this, and this is from my history as an EMT, I used to study to be a firefighter, uh, you don't want them to vomit and then choke on their vomit. So if they're on their side, their vomit will fall out of their mouth onto the floor. That's a big reason why. There may be other reasons as well, but from my own personal experience, I know that's one of the big reasons why we recommend people to be on their side after something like this. Now, as we mentioned, the process, the chain of events that's happening here, that once this absorbs through the nose into the bloodstream, it's going to signal to the liver to release the glycogen, which is the stored glucose in the liver. Now, that's going to release glucose into the bloodstream, which then, of course, elevates blood sugar. That's what gets our blood sugars to go up, right? So it's an indirect process, but it's all linked up. That's what it's doing. However, uh, as per recommendations on their website, you want to ingest some form of food or drink that is going to uh, assist in keeping blood sugars elevated after the event. So a juice box, some snacks, uh, some crackers and peanut butter, something like that. However, if you are helping somebody who has type 1 diabetes and they were unconscious and still are unconscious, after 15 minutes, there's a recommendation on the website to give a second dose or that you can at that point give a second dose. Now, I'm going to read one of the post delivery instructions, but these were more made for the medical professionals. So I'm also going to break it down into what it's talking about. Right. So it says the nasal mucosa is highly penetratable due to its large surface area and rich vascularization. Essentially, when you put it in your nose, your nose has a lot of blood vessels. And so it's real easy for it to permeate those or get through and get into your bloodstream, which quickly goes and tells the liver, hey, it's time to release some glycogen, right? Uh, so that whole process happens in a matter of minutes. And it's very exciting because it allows us to have that backup option if we ever have an urgent low blood sugar, whether we're unconscious or we can treat ourselves and this is our last resort. But oftentimes it's more comfort than nothing to have it with us, knowing that if things get that bad, we have an exit route. All right, so I hope you found that one helpful. I'm just going to go ahead and check my blood sugars real quick. Make sure that now that absorb, we're good. It's still, uh, still cruising. I'm at 128, so I'm going to keep a close eye on that now and make sure nothing happens. But I'm pretty positive we're fine. So that's what it looks like. That's how you would deliver it. Ultimately, Vaccimi is a great option, and this is what it looks like. It is a tool to add to your toolkit as someone living with type 1 diabetes like myself. Now, if that was helpful for you, definitely do hit that subscribe button right now. We put out weekly videos with educational content for type 1 diabetes, motivational content. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist and an expert on blood sugar analytics with CGMs. I love this stuff. So if you like learning about type 1 diabetes and want to learn how to have more predictable and stable blood sugars, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I put a new video out and uh, make sure that you don't miss the next one, all right? I got some fun stuff planned for you. Hit the like button as well. Love seeing if this is helpful or not and share it with somebody you love or that would want to know how to help you best. Sharing this video is gonna be the best way to help educate people that you love to know how they can love on you by being prepared to potentially save your life. So hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next video. They go up weekly and have a great rest of your day and keep up the fight.